Super excited to be reviewing my FlashForge Adventurer 5M 3D printer today. This is not a sponsored video. I bought this printer myself. Um, FlashForge Finder was actually my first ever 3D printer um, and I really love that printer. It was super reliable and so now I'm coming back to FlashForge to try their new Adventure 5M printer and there are a lot of really great features, a lot of great upgrades from my previous printer. Um, so we'll start with unboxing the printer. One of the things that I really like about these FlashForge models compared to some of the other brands is that um, with this box shape for the printer, it essentially comes fully assembled. You just have to like take the foam out, but otherwise it's basically fully assembled and there's just a few parts that need to be added. It comes with all the accessories that you need. So it comes with some adhesive if you're having difficulties with adhesion. Um, it comes with the tools that you need for the little bit of installation. Then it comes with the um, touch screen and the spool holder, a little bit of grease in case you need it, and then these clippers, which are great for cutting your 3D printing filament. So I'll just take you through um, the process of setting it up. It took me about 20 minutes total to um, set everything up on this 3D printer. So I did have to install the spool holder on the back here. Again, it came with all the tools that you need for that. And then I simply added my 3D printing um, filament. And then I needed to install the touch screen First, this was a little bit finicky because um, you have to take the little controller piece and get it right in the right spot on the touch screen. So it did take me a little bit of time, but otherwise an easy process. And then I plugged it in and turned it on and the printer started calibrating itself. One of the greatest things about this printer as it compares to some of the previous models of FlashForge, but also of other 3D printers on the market, is the automatic printing, auto leveling. You don't need to do any manual bed leveling. You don't need to be sticking a piece of paper under the nozzle to check your leveling. It does this, as you can see, it's leveling itself here. It has sensors that check the level and it prints out perfectly based on this. So to me, I think, especially for a beginner, um, if you're not used to calibrating your 3D printer, this is a huge plus, just being able to turn it on and have it level on its own. When people have 3D print you know, mistakes or challenges with their printer, it's often because of a leveling issue. So the next thing that I had to do was load up my filament. Um, so this 3D printer does have a filament detector on the back. So if your filament runs out halfway through the print, it will cut off, which is nice so that you can potentially save your print. It also has a dust cover for the filament, which is another nice feature. So you just thread it through the back there, thread it all the way into the extruder, and then um, you press on the touch screen, the load button, and you will see your filament come out after the nozzle's heated up. So once you've loaded your filament and got the printer calibrated, then it will offer you to print a test block. I decided to skip that process um, as I'm just going to print out some designs and see how they turn out. But certainly if you're a beginner, I'd recommend doing this. So now I'm going to take you over to my computer and show you how I find 3D designs to print. So I typically go to this website called printables.com and then I search up what I'm looking for. So here I've searched fidget toys and then you can see these are all free designs that I can download um, and print. Of course, you do have to check. Um, you might not be able to sell these designs because um, they may be copyrighted, but they're fine for personal use. So I searched through and um, it was recently Halloween, so I'm still a little bit in the pumpkin mood. So I decided to go with uh, this pumpkin fidget toy. I think my kids will really love this one. And so I can go down here and read comments, look at the files and see what I need. Here there's a few options. There's a smaller or a large design and then one that um, ha needs supports or doesn't. I'm thinking that this FlashForge is going to be an excellent 3D printer that's not going to need supports. So I'm going to go with the no supports option here. And then again, that's where you see the license to show that this is not allowed for commercial use. Then I'm going to open up the software for this printer called FlashPrint. That's something you need to download. 
and I'm going to click the button at the top with that file picture and I'm going to find in my downloads the file that I just downloaded. And then when I click on that, you can see that the design has been placed on my virtual print bed here. And now I'm going to be slicing, uh, which is essentially taking this design and making it layer by layer so that my printer can print it out. So you can make some adjustments to the design. You can see here I'm rotating it so I can get the pumpkin face to be facing forward. It's not necessary, um, but you can certainly scale or add supports. Again, I don't think I need supports for this particular design, but it can be helpful for some more complex designs. There are a lot of controls that you can see there on the side, but I'm just gonna click right away to start slicing. Here's all the standard slicing uh, profile for this printer. I'm not gonna make any changes because I like what it is standard. Just to note that I'm not gonna use a raft. Um, personally, I don't like using rafts. Rafts are like a thin layer underneath. Um, your design, I don't like to use them, but some people do. Then I can click the little print head icon up at the top and connect my machine. And then I can refresh just to get my machine on my Wi-Fi network. Check to make sure that you've connected your machine to the Wi-Fi. And I'll see my machine pop up here and I'll be able to print directly over the Wi-Fi. And here you can see my printer in action. I chose this design also partially to show you because it's a pretty intricate design. It requires a lot of accuracy so that those fidget pieces can uh, move nicely within the design, not fall out and stay, keep the design together. So here it is all printed. I pull it off the bed. Mine just completely came right off the bed easily. And here we go. What a fun design. This is a really cool fidget. Um, definitely my kids uh, are gonna have a lot of fun with this one. These are popular around my house printing off these fidget toys. Um, they are very satisfying and perfect if you wanna keep little hands busy. But overall, I'm really happy with how this print turned out. As you can see, all the pieces move really nicely. There was no issues with any of the margins there. Um, it's really smooth. And again, this just shows that the print, again, without having to manually do any settings, was um, uh, a really effective uh, print. And so I'm very happy with the Flash Forge. I knew I would be because I loved my first one so much, but I definitely think this is a great printer for beginners. It's good value and um, you'll be able to get started really easily and quickly and not have to deal with too many settings or setup with this printer, which is why I would recommend it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'll be back with some more tutorials on how to print some specific items.